All right, welcome in, everybody. It is January 4th in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I am Sweet Bobby. Welcome in to our little trading show that we do each and every day. We trade with live money. And if you do not know me, I am the inventor of the strangle. I invented the strangle. Not long after I invented the strangle, I also invented the uh, straddle. So once I did the straddle, then I invented the iron condor. Uh, that was my invention. And then I was at Callaway Gardens in Pine Mount, Georgia, and they have a butterfly exhibit. And I love, I was so moved by the butterfly exhibit that I also invite in, I also invite, uh, uh, I invented the, the butterfly tray as well. So that was me. And then as I was sitting there eating my ham sandwich, a uh, butterfly who had a broken wing came and rested upon my shoulder. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to do a new trade called a broken wing butterfly. So I actually invented the broken wing butterfly. So if any of you are out there trading any of those things, you need to stop because I've got a trademark uh, copyright on all of those trades and you need to cease immediately. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I didn't invent any of that stuff. But I am. I think it was funny, y'all, that you know I, I have a, a copyright claim against one of my videos and we won't talk about it long because you guys want to know about hedging so we're going to make sure that we we cover hedging today but i did want to show you what happened to little old sweet bobby because i'm a sweet guy right so let's bring this over here so you can just see because i think it's it's good that we talk about before we start talking about hedging uh i got one copyright strike and it was on my video from march 4 2021 when i talked about the black swan hedge and the video shows the exact details of my black swan hedge from my paid, what does he say? From my paid, how do I see the rest of it? From my paid course. My course is university. And I'm going to give out his uh, website since he has attacked me. So what I did is I filed a counterclaim saying, hey, look, pal, you cannot do that. So let's, let's look at what I said. Here's what I said. I said, options trades are not instruments that are subject to copyright, you idiot. If so, no one would be able to take, trade strangles, straddles, etc. I trade a hedge to protect portfolios using options. It's simply not possible to copyright an individual trade. The trade that I do protects against left side tail risk, and I have a right to teach this trade to others. I do not utilize any materials from any other trader. For example, Liz and Jenny from Tasty Trade named a trade the Jade Lizard. Anyone can put on this trade, and I can refer to it as a Jade Lizard or even a Salty Dog. I'm not using any of Mr. Bertino's materials in showing these hedge trades. I suppose I could refer to it as a Black Swan Hedge, but my PhD dissertation is on Black Swan Hedges. I have no idea how Mr. Bertino places his trade and his attempt to keep me from placing a perfectly legal trade in my portfolio and showing that trade to others has no effect on Mr. Bertino or his ability to change his students, charge his students to learn a specific trade. I swear under penalty of perjury. God help me so that I have good faith belief the material was removed due to mistaken or misidentification of the material to be removed or disabled. Damn it. Sorry. So I got a little bit... Uh, a little bit sidetracked there. So what I am teaching you today is a hedge. Now, I will, from henceforth and evermore, not refer to this as a black swan hedge because apparently that makes some people very, very angry and they start trying to sue Sweet Bobby who's trying to teach y'all how to protect your account. So we'll make up another name for it. Some people have called it the Sweet Bobby hedge, however you want to do it. And let me just give you a little bit of history for those of you that are new. We've got a, a great number of people who are new today. So what happened was I was researching hedges, a variety of hedges, and we use a variety of hedges in our current account. We use the, the Sweet Bobby hedge, <laughs> the Sweet Bobby hedge. We use the 111 trade. That kind of is a grind down hedge that helps us a little bit. And then we also do a VIX hedge. And normally I give credit to the people who came up with all of these individual trades. Well, to hell with that. We saw what good that gave us because I used to give Mr. B full credit 
for the black swan hedge, as it was taught to me from somebody who learned it from him, who, you know, who knows how these trades get out there. So I'm not trying to take his business away. And I'm sorry that he feels that way and he's all upset and he thinks that he has to, you know, cause me uh, worry. So we're dedicating this one to Mr. B today. This is for you. So I'm going to teach y'all everything that he says that I am trying to teach uh, that people are paying him thousands upon thousands of dollars. So whatever. I don't know if he teaches the, the, the sweet Bobby head, but we'll teach that today. So in 2020, it was around January that I closed all of my positions. You know, normally I was the person who sold 45 day options, 60 day options. I'd sell puts, didn't sell a lot of calls. I do some strangles. And I then only went to doing a put back ratio spread, which is what Mr. Bertino says I have infringed upon. Well, y'all put back ratio spreads have been traded long before uh, Mr. Bertino tried to call anything a black swan hedge. So I'm not exactly sure why he would try to sue Bobby. So nonetheless, we go on. And I had only entered these things, and I didn't even do them as Mr. Bertino did. I did them in a diagonal fashion, which meant that my short puts that I would sell in the, the sweet Bobby hedge would be longer dated options. And then I would buy options in a mirror dated expiration in a I did these as a put back ratio spread and I did them in a ratio diagonal method not to get too complicated on how we did it so the result of that was and I did that because I was expecting a humongous move in the market I expected a huge correction fortunately as I was about to get my toe cut off at my podiatrist, well, he was telling me that I needed to get a toe removed, which is another story. I was sitting in his office in March, 2020, and they have the sign that says no cell phones. And I'm like, oh crap, I've got a cell phone and I've got to trade because the market's crashing. And I said, doc, I said, if you don't mind, I need my phone because I've got to close some trades. He said, yeah, man, I hear the market is, is doing horrible. I bet you lost a lot. And I said, no, actually, I didn't lose a lot. And at the end of the day, when I had closed all of my positions and went totally to cash, my entire portfolio was up 208% on that humongous move down. And, and some of that came from the move in February. So, But combined, when I totally went to cash in March, I was up 208%. Now, the diagonal method of entering the Sweet Bobby Hedge has not been addressed by anyone on the internet. I don't care who Mr. B thinks he is. He did not come up with that. It's a put back ratio spread. You know, it's like someone cl claiming to own the zero DTE trade. And you go, well, you can't teach a zero DTE. Well, why can't I? Well, I've got a copyright on it. No, you can't copyright that trade. So I'll get on from Mr. B. So we're going to talk about that the hedge today that will now for forever known be known as the sweet Bobby hedge. Okay. And I will no longer give credit to anybody who has come up with any trade. Screw them all. All right. So I'm a little sweet and sour Bobby today. All right. So let's look at the markets really quick. Like, so the E minis are down 0.09%, not much movement at all. And as we look at it, the AD, the advancers over the decliners is kind of up. Right, it's 227. You'd expect the market to be a little bit up, maybe based on the AD. So we are below the overnight high. We are below this 15 minute opening range. We're below the cash open. We're below VWAP. We're below the hourly mid. And we have found a little bit of support at the overnight low. We've got a pivot point down here. But, you know, it's kind of cool just to see the market and what I think is going to happen the rest of the day. As I look down here, I go, what could catch us? Where is potential support, right? What is above us that is potential resistance? So I'm just kind of looking at that. You know, this is support at the moment. We'll see if it holds. This pivot point was support. So we've got two areas of support below us. And then we've got a lot of resistance up above us, which is all these lines. Let's look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's taking a little bath today, down 1.75%. But we don't care because... The Sweet Butts program, which is the Sweet Bobby Ultimate Trading Strategy, 
we are in TQQQ, and that is NASDAQ on steroids, 3X triple leverage that the entire world says you cannot hold long term. You just can't do. Well, we said hold my Yoohoo, or in this case, we said hold our Dr. Pepper. Why am I drinking Dr. Pepper? Because Dr. Pepper is one of the components of the NASDAQ 100, making up the triple Qs. Did you know that? Not only is the Dr. Pepper a part, but Walgreens, Costco, Amazon, Tesla, Google, Dollar Tree are all components of the Qs. So when we're trading the NASDAQ or a triple leverage ETF based on the NASDAQ, it certainly is influenced by uh, companies that you would not expect to be in the NASDAQ 100. And that would be a store like Ross. Raw stores where they spent $16 just the other day. So I just want to get you a feel of what we're doing here, right? So what we did is we decided, hey, what if we could trade NASDAQ, but then hedge ourselves to the downside? Is it possible that we can hold the TQQQs, which would be down, what, 1.6 times 3 is, what, 4.8 or so percent down today? Is How you doing, Bob? I'm doing fine. Because... We have a spreadsheet that tells us what to do. Well, let me just let you watch this. So we build a spreadsheet. I build a spreadsheet. And God, I don't even know if I can give credit to a dead man whose book the algorithm is based on. I'm afraid hell they'll try to see. So I'll just say I came up with this too. Okay, we'll just take credit for everything. No, I'll, I'll give credit where credit is due. This is, this is the work of Robert Lucello, God bless his, his dead soul. And he gave us an algorithm that I have programmed into a spreadsheet that tells me when to buy shares of the queues. And it tells me when to buy or sell shares of one of our hedge trades, which is TML, which is triple leverage bonds. So we've got triple leverage TQQ, we've got triple leverage bonds. So I can tell you today that the bonds are down significantly because we have a signal to buy 12 shares. Isn't that cool? So it actually tells us, hey, Bob, the price goes down, you need to be accumulating shares. Does the same thing on TQQ. And what we do is we have this little puppy hooked up to Thinkorswim so that these prices are updated. And I'm trying to see if it's updated now because it doesn't seem like it's popping, but trust me, it will. We also have an account that we monitor in Tastyworks that's doing the same thing, right? It's telling us that we need to, to buy 10 shares in that account. So it's kind of cool. It, it gives us some indication as, as to when and buy and, and hold. All right, let's look at a couple things around the market before we get to the hedge. I know that's why you guys are here. So the second thing we look at is market profile and, and we look at volume profile. So let's go to the E-minis. So we draw this little chart based on market profile with the green here. We draw this every month. This is called the big green monster. God, I don't even want to give credit to the man who came up with this and I love him much because I'm afraid I'm going to get saved again. So we'll just say I came up with the big green monster. So with the big green monster, this is based on market profile, which is the amount of time that price has stayed at a particular you know, area. So if, if, if price stayed here at 47.50 for more hours than it did here, then that would influence market profile. Now with volume profile, this is here. This shows you the amount of volume, not the amount of time that was traded at each particular price. So based on this, we see that we have an area of resistance right here on market profile, which also kind of corresponds to the value area high on volume profile. This red line is where the most volume has traded over the last 10 days. Okay, so price is really comfortable trading at about 4775. Now, based on these drawings that we have, I can tell you that the price of the E minis is fairly priced. This is in a fair value zone, identified by a 50% line here, and then bordered by the 20 and the 80. So any price within here for this particular month will be a fair value price. And you see what happened is price gets up here, 
it says, hey, wait a minute, I've got a little bit of resistance here, uh, so I need to pop back down. And it's uncanny how many times this happened. I know you're sitting there thinking, this is witchcraft, this is voodoo. Yeah, it really is. And But it works so well in conjunction. This is probably the best little tool in our bag, right, is our volume profile and our market profile. So if price were to go here into this little area, this is a period, an area called oversold. So when price is oversold, we would expect a reversion back into the fair value zone. If not, price then would go down and become overbought for the fair value zone below, this being the next fair value zone. So we just identify areas of where, where price is oversold and price is overbought. A lot of complications with that. I've got an entire video on that. Just search for Sweet Bobby Voodoo, where I do give credit to the person who taught me that. All right, now let's look at the NASDAQ on this little chart, see what it looks like since we trade that as well. All right, so here we see what happened. We drew this on the first or the second of the month. And indeed, it is showing, it's incredible. I don't know how it works. It shows a little bit of support in this area. Everyone see that? All right, so what would we expect with NASDAQ? Well, would we expect NASDAQ to pop back into the fair value range? So with that, if it doesn't, comes over here, it'll be oversold, and we would especially think the reversion back there. If not oversold, it becomes overbought for the fair value zone below. Okay, so just showing you some of the tools in our in our bag, and we draw those on the first trading day of the month. We draw all of these support and resistance lines, and it, I'm telling you, how it works is beyond me. I'm not smart enough to know how it works. I just know it does work. All right, now with that, let me take you to the next tool in our bag. And again, I always give credit where credit is due until now. So now I'm just saying I come up with everything. So we have a little thing called the screw, skew driver. And skew driver is kind of cool because it really works when price is at an extreme. So if price is really, really, really overbought, it'll show us that a impending correction is coming. And if price is oversold, it will show us that, you know, that the market's going to go back in an upward. But I should have had it already open. So let me just give it a second for it to open here and we'll show you that. But in the meantime, let's get started on the newly proclaimed Sweet Bobby Hedge. Let's see what's going on in the chat. If you look at one hour, 20 day volume profile for ES, you'll see a different picture. Theo Trade uses that time trade. Yeah, and that's fine. You want to use that uh, time trade, uh, one hour, 20 day, that's fine. I prefer. And you kind of get do what you're comfortable with, right? I do the 10-day, 30-minute chart, and that seems to work really, really well for what we do. All right, so here we go. So we got to figure out where our um, – I hope this thing works today. So at January 3rd, we, we're, we're going closest to 30 days. So it tells us that – I'm trying to think. It doesn't look like we're getting data from uh, Think or Swim for some reason. Let me log back down and log. Then we'll talk about the black swan. I'm sorry. We'll talk about the sweet bobby hedge. All right, any questions before we get started? I've given you a lot. I'm here, so I can log in. Hopefully our spreadsheet will be working. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Let me just show you this. Um, just got out from feeding the donkeys. Um, and those things are eating me out of house and home. Donkeys love to eat. All right, here we go. We'll log in here and see if we can get our spreadsheets to work. All right, now we're in. Now let's see if our spreadsheet starts to do and collect the data that it needs from Thinkorswim. Everybody, if you would, make sure you're muted. Don't pick that up in the microphone. Now let's see if we're, our little thing's working here. Close it up. We'll get to it. Say, 
Don't save, dang it. All right, let's just go to the black swan hands. I'm sorry, the sweet bobby hands. All right, so, I mean, there's a, there's a number of things that you can do it in. If you've got portfolio margin, you could do this hedge in uh, SPX. You can do it in the E-minis. You could do it in the micros, right? If you've got a smaller account, you could put this on in the micros. But let me just kind of show you how I look at things on the risk profile. So we're in Thinkorswim. We go to the Analyze tab, click it on Risk Profile, and I put it on where I have my Sweet Bobby hedges, and that's in the E-minis. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to do my vol step. And I go to four vol steps, and I move this up to 15. Now, why 15? Why not keep it five? Well, I'm trying to stress my, my account for a 20% down move. So I've set my price license, you'll see here, at up 15, up 10, up five. Here's that the money. Then down five, down 12, and down 20. Down 12% is where the brokerages usually test an account, but I'd like to see how's my account going to withstand a 20% move. So we go back to March of 2020, that overall move was approximately 35% down. We go to the crash of 87, I think that was about a 24, 25% down. So I'm looking about, you know, how am I going to do on a 20% down move? So we're talking about an account here that is, you know, $47,000, $48,000, almost $50,000 account. So how would we do on a 20% down move? Well, let's go over here and hide simulation. So we're just showing positions. And on our ES positions, it says with a 20% down move, we're going to be up $8,000. Okay, that's great. But that doesn't take into account the increase in volatility as that sudden move to the downside would happen. So here is where I go to kind of figure out, and I look at this box over here. Let's draw a little box for you so you can see what we're looking at. All right, so kind of follow along here. So now I want to see what happens if price goes down 20% and the bar pops up to between 60, 75%. Everyone see these numbers here, 60%, 75%. And it looks like, you know, the count would be up between $73,000 and $110,000 on a 20% drop. And that's not bad on a $50,000 count. So if you only had the black swan hedges on, you would be set up to look really, really, really good on a 20% down move. We say, Bobby, how do you know that the volatility would be at 60 or 75? It's just based on my personal experience with working with this. I didn't learn it from Mr. B, I didn't learn it from you. They just, you know, trial and error, looking at what I think these top moves would do as far as the volatility increase. So you say, well, what, Bobby, what if volatility just went up to 15%? Well, that's not going to happen on a 20% move. So, but if it did, you're at $4,000. Well, what if volatility only went up 30%? Well, you're up 18000 what if it only went to 45, Bobby? Well, you're up 41,000, okay? But my assumption going in on the Analyze tab is that we're going to be probably up about 100 grand on a 20% down. Can my account withstand that? Oh, heck to the yeah. While everybody else is crashing and everybody else is, you know, sucking wind, you and I have just made $111,000 on a $50,000 account. All right, now let me show you something cool. Well, what about your entire portfolio? Though? Okay, Bob, you showed us that, but what about the entire portfolio? So all you got to do is go here, and instead of single symbol, you want to go portfolio beta way. So now let's see how the entire portfolio would do on a 20% move. So on a 20% move down, I'm going to make between $16,752 and roughly $48,000. Everybody see these numbers to the left? This is how I stress my camp. Just want to make sure everybody sees. We're, we're stressing it to the downside. I'm stressing it 20% down. That's a big, big, big move. Okay. So that's what I'm going to show you today. How do I have this amazing hedge power to the downside? So what if we go down 35% like we did in uh, 
Let's see how much we would be up. 35%. We're down 35%. Is that worse or better? So now we're at $179,000. Well, what about just your hedges? If you if you did like I did and said, I want to trade nothing but the sweet Bobby hedge, how how far up would I be? On a 35% down move, sudden down move, a crash, you'd be up $295,000. Now, is it going to be exactly that? No, it's not going to be back. We're, we're looking at models. We're just trying to do exactly what the brokerage companies do. We're just stressing our accounts to the downside. Basically, what I want to know is, am I going to be okay? Am I going to be in business tomorrow? Am I going to be open, be able to open my account and come in and be able to trade? And the answer is, oh, heck to the end. So now let's why don't we bring a little drawing pad up and give you the specifics. God forbid if someone thinks that I'm violating some humongous secret here because it's not a secret. This, the Sweet Bobby Hedge, is nothing but a five kids here. I blame this only in the working area. Working area is at which one is that one? There we go. Here we go. So let's let's look at the. This is nothing but this hedge that I have on with that incredible downside protection is nothing but a put back ratio spread. And let me do the registered trademark on that so that none of y'all can ever call a trade a put back ratio spread because I've trademarked it. I'm just joking. I've copyrighted it. All right, so put back ratio spread. So here's what I'm doing. I'm basically selling three puts And then I'm buying five puts, okay? Everybody sees that's a put back ratio spread. So I'm selling three and buying five. Now, why three and five? I don't care who says that they've patented this trade. That's, that's what I want to do. I want to do three and five. I don't care where I learned it or how I did it or if it was by mistake. This is the trade that I want to make. Now, most people who do put back ratios, we'll do them in a, in a you know, negative one to plus two. That's what we normally see people do. But why do I do three and five? Not because I learned it from anybody. It's just plus, and that's what I like. That's what I found that has worked. And regardless of who tries to sue me, that's why I'm, I was up 208% in March of 2020. So we're selling three puts and we're buying five puts. Okay, Bobby, that makes sense. But at what expiration? So you know what we're doing. What expiration are we doing this? Okay, 60 plus DTE. I would not go under 60 days. Why? My own personal experience. I like them out farther. So I will go out 60 plus DTEs. A lot of times, if I am just starting to trade and I don't have any black swan hedges on, then I will put entire tranches on and I'll normally start those out Anywhere from 120 days to 150 days. I am very comfortable going out 120, 150 days to do some of these trades. But as a general rule, if you want a general rule, I would say don't go out farther than 60 days. I mean, don't go out any closer than 60 days. Okay? Now, now we've got what we sell. We've got how many we buy. We've got the DTE. Again, what instrument will you do this on? Well, if you've got portfolio margin, you can do it in SPX. I, for my account, do I really like doing these in the E-minis. If you've got a smaller account, you can certainly do these in the micros. Okay. So we know how many we're selling by, and we know the DTE. Now, which strikes? Which strikes? And regardless of what anyone says, this is my personal experience, and this is what I have found works for me. I don't care where I learned it or where you learn it. I'm just going to show you exactly what works for me. I did not get this from anybody that's attempting to see. All right, so here's what we do. I go to the trade table, and I'm just going to show you how I do this trade. I go in, and I sell three and buy five. Okay, so where would we do that? Well, let's go look. We're in the e-meetings, and we go, and 
over 60 days. So I may look at the 73 days, right, as a starting place. Now, where I do these things is I normally look for an option that I can sell for three bucks. So anywhere in here would be just fine, right? 335, 310, 290, doesn't matter. The second thing, so we're looking to sell an option. Let's get back on our little, little thing here. We're gonna sell one for about $3. Sell three at $3. Why $3? My personal experience has shown that's a great place to be. Let's go back and show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna sell this one for 310. And I'm gonna do three contracts of that. Everybody with me for 310. All right. Then if I wanted to start the entire hedge, I would go 50 points below. Why 50 points? Okay, so someone just asked me this yesterday, and the question was, hey, can I go 100 points wide? Can I, instead of, I sell the 2,800, can I buy five at the 2,700 because they're cheaper? No, 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 no. You're looking for 50 wide strikes. If you've got 100 wide strikes, go to another expression. 50 wide, in my personal experience, is adequate as a hedge. It has hedging power. If you go down 100 points slower, you're not going to get the same hedging power. So hold your control key down and click the $3. Okay, everybody see this. So then I'm going to make five of those. Now notice this says this is a custom order. This does not say that, that somebody has a, a, a trademark on the, on the trade. It doesn't say anything about trade. It just says custom. And if someone's got a trademark on the trade, you would think that it wouldn't allow me to do this. So it says that I can put this trade on for $5.30, which would be two, what, 65, 265, $265, exactly. So it cost me $279 to put this one tranche of the Black Swan Hedge on. Everybody follow along. It's a three by five. So in this particular account, what I did is I started out by buying four tranches of the Black Swan Hedge. Now, let me tell you the most opportune time to do so. If you are just starting out with the Black Swan Hedge and you want to have a, uh, a, a your hedge on, then you know you can start out with four tranches. But really, where you need to test your portfolio is that analyzer. All right, so everybody sees what exactly we're doing. Right, we're putting in a uh, uh, this would be a, 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 the the trade that would be the, a one tranche of a Black Swan Hedge. So let's look at it one more time. We're selling, let's say, the 2,800. We we'll get three of those. And then we're going to look at it. Two, three. Then we're going to buy five of the 2,750. Two, three, four, five. Selling three, buy five. So now let's do this. Let's go and let's analyze the trade. All right, so it takes us back to the Analyze tab. It's got our ES here. We want to hide positions so that it just shows us the one option here, okay? So now, what does this look like on a 20% down move? How much for $265, how much hedging power did I give myself? Yes, since I have my price slices already set up. All right, here we go. So here's a 20% down move. Make sure that's this. That's a 35% down move. Let's move it back up to 20. Here we go. 20. All right, how much are we up on a 20% down move, sudden volatility rush? We're up $23,000. So it's not bad for a position that I put on for $265. That's a lot of bang for your buck. Whereas most of the world, in order to hedge, what are they doing? They're just buying puts. They're buying puts. We are buying puts, but we're also selling puts that help us to finance the purchase of the puts. It's kind of a cool thing. Now, 
how much bang do you need? Well, that's when you go back here and instead of hiding positions, you're going to do your portfolio beta weighted and you're going to go show all, right? Since you see everything, and then you see that on the down move, we're going to be up about 70,000 on the move down. So anyone got questions about that? So that's how I get started. And I use the analyze tab to see how much bang for the buck do I need? And I'm going to teach you the diagonal method as well. I'll teach you the diagonal method as well, but let's go on. So here's what I do. After I have a number of these, and I've got a number of these on, let's see. Let's show my groups, and I want to show you exactly what I've got on. So we've got here, BSH 15, which I'm dyslexic. So this, instead of BSH, should say SBH, Sweet Bobby Cage. But for some reason, my dyslexia kicks in every now and then. So I've got BSH, it should be SBH. SBH 15, we've got a diagonal BSH. We've got a 17 here. So I've got a number of these trades on that you can see that are providing hedge power to the overall portfolio. All right, now here's the cool part. Once we get these things started, then it's just a matter of putting them on and taking them off. Now, how? here's, here's the thing that we really, really like. Though. Most of these trades we put on for absolutely free. The one that I just showed you would cost me $265 plus commissions. But most of these I enter free or for a credit. I'll show you how. All right. So what we do, once I have several tranches of these, you know, I may have five or six tranches of these, then I become much more selective in my entries. And here's how I do it. I wait until ES is down. I wait till it has a down day. And I want the entire market to be down 0.4%. Why 0.4%? Well, because when the market goes down, if you're selling options, those options become swollen, right? The volatility of a down move, those options get juicier. And I want to sell an option that is really, really juicy. So I wait for an overall down day in the market. And here's what I do. I don't do the entire trade. I only do half of the trade. And the half of the trade that I do is selling my three options. Check this out. So I would go, I'm going to sell three options for $3.05. Isn't that dangerous? Well, yes. But can your account withstand the stress? So what I would do is right click, analyze the trade. Can we withstand selling three puts? So I'm going to go hide positions. Let's take this one out that we did while ago. So can I, let's take this one out. So that should be the only thing above. So can my account withstand selling three? Well, how do I know that? Well, I look and see what happens on a 20% down move. So on a 20% down move, I'm going to now show all. And let's look at our overall portfolio. 20% down move with those three, right? I'm showing all. Then my account, instead of being up $70,000, is only going to be up, you know, maybe $8,000. See it here. So can I sell three? Yes, I can. So if the market were down today, my account could withstand selling those three options for 305. Now, then the next thing I do is I put in a GTC order. So once that's, once that's filled and I've sold three, I go down 50 points below and I put a GTC order, which is good till cancel, to buy this at a level that as such, the entire trade can be put on for free. What do I mean for free? I mean that my credits equal my debits. Or I'll do this at a price to where I can put the entire trade on for credit. How about that? Wouldn't it be cool 
if you didn't have to pay for your automobile insurance? Wouldn't it be cool if you could do it in a way to where you got that automobile insurance and they paid you? That's what we do here. So let's say that I'm going to sell those for 305. Cool thing is, I have built you a spreadsheet that tells you exactly how much you have to buy those loans for. Now, did I get this from anybody? Oh, hell no. I spent hour upon hour upon hour devising this simple little spreadsheet with all these complex formulas that will utilize my commission structure and you can enter your commissions on variables. You see, it takes information from what my commissions are. And I came up with this. And guess what? I allow you to use this. Hell, you can take it to your family gatherings and tell them that you came up with it. But Mr. B did not come up with this. Nobody that ever come up, I came up with it. And I offer it to you for free. Why? Because I want y'all to do this. How much do I charge you for this? I don't charge you a dime. You know why? Because I make my money trading. I don't need your money. Right? I don't want your money. Keep your money. So if I sell one tranche of three puts and I do it for a price of 3.05, what price do I need to buy my loan so that my final P&L is at least zero or maybe even a credit? Now, I'm going to get ahead of just a little bit, but there'll be a harvest in here. So harvesting means, you know, for those of you that harvest, that means you, if you're hunting deer, you harvest the deer. You take the deer, right? You kill the deer. So at some point, we're going to harvest the short puts that we sell. So if I sell something for 305, I ordinarily will harvest or close that position when it gets down to 20 cents when it's decayed. So I've got to put the price of the harvest in there. You can harvest it for whatever you want to, quarter, 15 cents, 10 cents, whatever. But at some point, I'm going to take the risk off from this trade. And I generally have found, I like closing them at 20 cents. So that means that my outstanding variable is how much should my GTC order be to buy those loans? Let me show you how I do that. I do it with a little thing called, I click the data here. And I do a little what if analysis and I do goal seek. And I'll go through this very, very slow. So I set sell K2, everyone see that sell K2, to a value of zero. So that means I'm going to break, break even. So if I want to break even on that trade, set that to a value of zero by changing sell F2 to the price of the loans. Everyone with me? Set sell K2 to a value of zero by changing cell F2. And then we let Excel do all of the work for us. Check this out, it's very, very cool. So it tells me that if I'm selling those 305 and harvesting those three at 20 cents, then I can buy those loans for $1.63 and have that trade put on for absolutely free. So, Let's say you want to do that as you want to make a little credit on it. I'll do it for $1.50. If you do this overall trade at $1.50, then you are putting the trade on for a $32.48 credit with a high probability that you're going to at least keep the credit received for the overall trade. Is everybody with me? Questions so far? So we go back in and I will put on a GTC order or $1.63 or $1.50, whatever you want. You want to credit or you want it, You just want to get your hedge on as quickly as possible. If you want to get your hedge on as quickly as possible, then I do the dollar, you know, I do the dollar 63 or so and put that on as a GTC, right? Confirm and see in and then send that order off. So then what do you do? So then you've got that trade on. So the next thing you do is you do this little working order. Oh, I got a feed, didn't I? See, I got feel. Aha! I didn't even know it. So at 9.05 this morning, 9.05 this morning, I had an all I had a GTC order to harvest those short puts that I had sold for roughly three dollars. And my order kicked in at 20 cents. 
So those, the risk of those six options that I sold were totally removed. Check it out. So then I go to ES and I say, where do I have positions now? So you see, this is green. So this tells me I have loans there. So that tells me I've got 17 days of hedge on these long puts. I've got 27 days of pure hedge on these long puts. Now, if we go out to 45 days, you'll see that I have long puts represented by green and I have short puts represented by red. So let's go in and show you how I do the harvesting. Here we go. Black Swan Hedge that I've already put on. Here's one where I sold them for $4. I sold three of those for $4. So you don't always have to stick with three, but just around the threes where you get a good hedge player. And I bought five at three seventy-five. dollars I'm not sure if I did that the same day or whatever, but here's the cool thing. Now I need to put a GTC order to close these create closing order. So I've got three, and you see they're going for 70 cents. So no, 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 we don't want to do 70 cents. What did I tell you I harvest these for? I harvest them for 20 cents. And I'll put that in as a GTC order. Now let's do a little talking here. Let's do just a little bit of talking. So we've got a GTC in to close these shorts and take risk off and only leave me with the, the profit. So let's say we've got 45 days in these options. I would say, make sure, you know, Tasty Trade teaches us, you know, the, to manage at about 21 days to expiration, right? You don't want these short puts that are part of your black swan hedge. You don't want these to go close to expiration. Why? Because that's where we have the gamma risk of those short options, even though they're far out of the money. So what I would do is I'd start monitoring it around 21 days. And if that option has only decayed down to, you know, 35 cents, then I may consider going ahead and closing, it, going ahead and paying just a little bit extra to take that risk off. But in no way would I let that option go under 14 days to expiration. You want to take that risk off take that risk off of the table, okay? So what happens then once I've got a fully formed black swan hedge? So let's say I've, uh, I've sold the three and I put the GTC order in and the GTC order fails and I bought those options, the five for, you know, $1.50, $1.63, whatever. Then what am I doing? Then I wait for another down day of 0.4, or greater, and I put on another tranche. How do I start that tranche? I do it by selling three or six or nine. So you can do it in any combination of three and then buying a, uh, if I did two tranches, that'd be selling six. So then I would be looking to put a GTC order in to buy 10 long options. So you keep that three to five ratio, sell three, buy five, sell six, buy 10, sell nine, uh, you know, buy, buy 15. So I'm always keeping it in that three to five ratio. Okay. And then you just keep doing it over and over again. Now, the cool thing is, is you can actually build this thing up. So if you've got a ton of these things on, maybe the next time you can sell six. Or maybe the next time you can sell nine. Or maybe the next time you can sell 20. All you got to do is go to the Analyze tab and say, I just want to see, how would I do on a 20% drop if I sold this particular number of options? Now, the spreadsheet that I have used to, well, the old one that had, was so much big, I would keep up with the number of days that it would take to fill the longs after I filled the short. You know, it may take you about 25, 21 days to fill them. Sometimes it'll take two or three days, then you'll fill those longs. But it's really, really cool to see, oh, wow, you know, while I slept, all these GTC orders are filling while I am, you know, uh, I'm sleeping. So the harvest takes place while I'm sleeping. The buying of the five takes place while I'm sleeping. And it provides me a great, great hedge to the downside. Now, I want to show you something that a friend of I and I came up with 
Didn't get this from anybody else. Mr. B had absolutely positively nothing to do with this. I give him credit for nothing. But we came up with this weird little way of entering these things in a diagonal fashion. Now, I don't want you guys to go all crazy about the diagonal uh, fashion uh, because it worked for me, maybe 208% in my account. I don't like them as much as having the longs in the same expiration as the short. So I really love having the long puts in the same expirations as the uh, when and how do you exit if the market crashes? It's a great question, Guy. And here's the cool thing. When it first happened in February and the market crashed and I saw that my account was up an ungodly amount of money, I mean, literally, I'd never had this happen before. My hands were trembling because I'm like, is this real? You know, is my account up, you know, a gazoodle amount of money. So I got on the phone with Thinkorswim. Now you can imagine what was happening with Thinkorswim that day. I was on hold forever. So I put the phone on hold, put it on speakerphone. I was at my office. At that time, I was working out, uh, you know, working at a full-time job. You know, I'm retired now. I was working at a full-time job and I was like, oh my God, you know, what am I doing? So here's how I had to do them and to take those off. I basically had to peel these things off as an onion. <laughs> because here's the thing, if you start trying to close, you know, an ungodly amount of negative trades or of your short and then try to trade your, you know, everything as a, as a single trade, you just can't do it. So what I had to do was take off, and I just peeled it like an onion. I said, I exited a short, and then I'd exit a long. I'd exit a short, I'd exit a long. I'd exit a short, I'd exit a long. And you don't want to exit all your longs first, right? Because your shorts that you're closing have a tremendous loss. So you may tr you know, close those things at a tremendous loss. Keep in mind that your loans have a tremendous gain. So as I was sitting there, you really have to, and, and the great thing is if you're part of our group, uh, we're going to go immediately. If, 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 if the crash comes, we're all getting on. I'm going to go to our Discord room and I say, guys, we are signing on because we are peeling the onion. So you'll get to peel the onion with me. But keep in mind, I know that the majority of you are not at a computer trading at home all day. I know where you're at. You're at the office. You're trading on a phone. And this ought to give you some reassurance. I did the entire thing from my cell phone. I've got an Apple, whatever. And I did the entire peel out from, you know, a doctor's office. And the first one I did from my office. So you can do that. So as I'm thinking about it, going back over it, I go, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to take profits on one of my loans first, right? So that's good because I can get, take, take that profit, take that. So I close the loan, then I close a short. Then I close a loan, then I close a short. And your hands may be shaking while you're doing this and you may go, oh my God, I've never experienced something like this. But it's really kind of fun, you know, when you peel this onion off. But I would take a profit first from one of the loans because those are up big then that would give me enough cash in the account and everything to close the loss of the short option. So, you know, and then I would say, well, I'd try to close maybe two of my loans and then close a short. So you kind of have to do that. And it's kind of a trial and error. I wish I could go back. I actually tried to see if I could find those specific trades that I did on that day, because I wanted to know and go back, how did I do it? But I know how I did it. I closed a profitable trade, then I closed a loser. Because I had much more profitable trades than I had loser. I got five winners. I've got three losers. So close a profitable, close a loser. Close a profitable, close a loser. It's really cool. All right, so what happens if you do your first sales on a 0.4% drop and it keeps dropping? So you never get to have your loan puts on and you only have loan delta positions or just loan stocks. Well, yeah, I mean, could that happen? Yeah. 
that, that accident could happen. You sell three, right? So you're kind of like, what if it keeps on dropping? You never get to, to buy your long put. That's why if you are first starting, I would do something that's probably 90, 120, 150 days out. So the really cool way to do it is, is, is for most accounts, here's what I did. I bought four tranches to start. I just did it on an update. So there, it's more advantageous to you to do this on an update. So what I would do is I'd wait for a big update in the market. And if you want to go in and just buy it and buy your insurance to start your campaign, then go ahead and buy your Sweet Bobby Hedge. And, you know, do what we said, it was $260, so times four, so you're a little over $1,000, right, to get into four tranches of these. Now, when you are short 12 and long 20, when the next drop comes of 0.4%, you're in a much better position to sell another three because then you're only short 15 options, but you're long 20. Does that make sense? But I've never had a situation to where I put a negative three on and I never got, you know, never was able to feel. I could see it happen. But that's why if I were you, I would go in and buy a few tranches. I like buying four tranches. I got four tranches. So I've sold 12, bought 20. Cost me a thousand bucks in my account. Now you say, Bobby, my account's only 5,000. Well, you probably don't need to be doing this in the E-minis. You need to be doing maybe something in the micros where you can do four slash MEs and just follow the same type of procedure there. All right? So the way that I did it to start with, and I don't like this as much, but I am going to show it to you. Here's what I did in March of 2020, and it started around January. So I would enter these in a diagonal method. So I would maybe go and I would, you know, see a lot of times you go in here and you go, wow, the $3 one's here. I don't see anything below it. Yes, yeah, so I would not mess with anything in here. And if you see all of these, they're 100 strikes, right? So you theoretically could do it here, but it's going to cost you a lot more money, right? It's going to cost, you're going to sell that for $7.25 and you got to buy that one for whatever, you know, if you're putting the whole thing else. I would skip that expiration. Let's look at 115 days. Just try to find us some strikes and I'll show you the way I did it. So here, kind of the same thing, right? I see 100 wide. I don't see anything that I could do there. So let's go and look at 100 days. A little better, right? But there's 415. Those are 50 wide strikes. So you could potentially do there. 86 days. Let's go look for something here. 86 days. So here we're getting a little better, right? There's 50 wide. See there, you could do that one for $3, this one for $2.90. But here's how I did it. And I'm scared to show you this because I don't think it's as good of a hedge. But here's what I would do, uh, or what I did in January. And I say it wasn't that good, but the thing worked 208%. So I would sell three at $25.50 in the 86 day. Uh, let's just model that. I would sell three for three dollars and let's do analyze trade that's that one 25.50 all right so there it is so then what would i do well i would go in about 30 days so i go to about 56 days and i would buy five so i'd be looking at about 56 days to buy five Change that to ES time. I would go to about 56 days and buy five. Well, where would you buy them? Well, I'd do it about the, you know, again, I just sold the 2550s, so I would buy the 2500s for a dollar. Let's see what that looks like. So we'll buy five of those. Let's see if we can see what this looks like. So everybody sees what I'm doing. And the reason I did this is because it made sense to me that going, hey, wait a minute. If I go closer to, you know, expiration on buying my five, then that would allow me to buy those at a much cheaper price. 
So instead of, you know, they're already at a dollar. So let's analyze this, analyze that trade. All right, so now we've got these two trades. So let's hide positions and see what this looks like. It's just those two. Now, make sure that's the only two that I've got. And yeah, so so what did the diagonal look like? Only 20% down move. So this looked like 20% down moves. And if all went right, I'm at $1,600. Well, how much did this overall trade cost you? Let's see. This one. Gave us a credit of 444. We get a credit of 444. And a debit of 259.10. Now, show you something else you could do. So 259.10. So I put this trade on for an overall credit of 185. All right. So with that in mind, you could spend another $185 on your insurance. So what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. That means that instead of selling the three for $2,550 and buying five at $2,500, you could bump this little booger up a little bit, couldn't you? So you could say, what if I bought the $2,550, the same strike? Traded. What if you went up to $2,600? That cost you $1.15. Do you see do you see what I'm saying? So that would be a better hedge. So let's go, you go up to 2700 So you're still able to do this thing. Maybe you move that up to 2800 Aha, now your mind's kicking, right? Because now you're saying, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I can do this and do the entire trade. How much would that cost you? Firm and sin. So you're doing 444 credit and you got a debit to 421. You're able to still put that trade on for a credit. But what does that look like? What does this trade look like? Much better, right? Now 20% drop, you're up 17,000. And you were able to do that as a credit. So there's all different kinds of ways that you can structure this. And I can tell you this, there's no one human being that can say, hey, I own this trade. It is available to all of you. Yeah, you can view this recording as many times as you want to. I'll have it on YouTube within the hour after this is over. So let's see what the questions are. Uh, why do you need the VIX call hedge in addition? Guy, it's a great question. Um, so my PhD dissertation kind of took the VIX call and analyzed that hedge. And what I found was, while you know we're spending 0 0.0025 times whatever our net lick is to buy those 120-day uh, 10 delta calls in VIX, the maximum drag on your net lick is 3% a year by buying that hedge. Interestingly enough, over the time period, and I don't have the specifics for my dissertation, and my dissertation is in our Discord room. So if anybody's in there, just click under resources and 100 and God ever many pages it is, 145 pages of, you know, academic whatever, uh, showed that the VIX hedge performed very, very well. And in fact, was overall profitable. Now, most traders hedge by buying puts, right? So you buy puts in SPX, you buy, buy puts in the E-minis, uh, those actually perform better, but the VIX call hedge performed best when you needed the insurance most. So, you know, it, you, you when do you need insurance? Well, you don't need insurance. Most of the time, we don't need homeowners insurance. I mean, it's there. We pay for it all the time. Every year we pay for it. But really, the, the time that you actually need it is when the house is on fire. Okay. So the house is on fire. We are needing the insurance. Well, in that case, the best hedge is rather than puts in an S&P related entity uh, are the VIX calls. So that's why I still run those because I'm taking a lot of risk though. Keep in mind that I'm doing a portfolio that is 70% TQQQ. 
I'm doing a portfolio that is 20% TMF and 10% cash. Why the 10% cash? So that I can do these options trades on the hedge. All right, so you've asked about the VIX hedge. I will show you the VIX hedge. Okay, we'll do that another day. Heck, we might do it tomorrow. We'll do the VIX hedge and I'll show you that. Then the other hedge that we have is the 111 trade, which is gorgeous. Let me just show y'all that before we let you go. I know a lot of you gotta go, but I just wanna show you what our, uh, man, did you close? Tasty works. Hold on a minute, let me click log into Tasty works. Give me a second. And let me give y'all the Discord room too. You wanna know how to join the Discord. And everything that we do is free, y'all. Uh, this is for y'all. And I told people, people say, Bobby, why do you do this for free? Because y'all keep me grounded. Y'all keep me, where's my invite button? Uh, members, hold on a second, I'll get there. Uh, my God, where's the thing at? Trade in there, here we go. Okay. Invite people. Let me send y'all an invitation. Copy and paste it here. Yeah, so y'all come on in. We've got a great group of, of traders, but what y'all do for me, why is that not tasty? Huh. Well, listen, hook me up on uh, Facebook. I'm Bobby Gaines. Send me a friend request or send me a message at uh, Sweet Bobby on YouTube, and I will, yeah, I'm trying to get that link here. Let's see, copy the link, copy, and let's see if I can paste it. Control V. There we go. Now you've all got the Discord link. So y'all come on in. The only thing we say is no assholes allowed. We've got enough assholes, don't we, Rod? And where's Ken at today? We've got plenty of a-holes already here. So we just we just don't want any a-holes coming in. Uh, the world of traders are filled with them. As y'all can see, people are trying to now sue me because I'm sharing things that they think are proprietary. And I'm telling you, a put back ratio spread is not proprietary. And that's all this is, you know, and you can spend 2000 or $6,000 to learn this, or you can come here with us and we'll be glad to have you because I don't want to charge you anything. I want y'all to be successful because you keep me accountable. You keep me accountable. All right. Yeah. Rod, you know, it. we got enough a-holes in here already. So no more, no more. All right. Any, uh, any questions at all before we go? Anything else? I appreciate y'all joining us. And again, I'll try to get on the VIX hedge uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day. But we meet every day at 12 Eastern time, except on Friday, because Beth and I go to lunch. And that's our little lunch date. So we normally meet at 2 p.m. Eastern and uh, on Friday. So y'all have a great rest of your day. And I will see y'all tomorrow.